DiscerningHearts.com, in cooperation with the Oblates of the Virgin Mary, presents The Discernment of Spirits, Setting the Captives Free, with Father Timothy Gallagher. Father Gallagher is a popular retreat leader, Ignatian scholar, and a lecturer around the world who holds a doctorate from the Gregorian University and is the author of The Discernment of Spirits, The Examine Prayer, Meditation and Contemplation, and many other works based on the teachings of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And he can be seen on Living the Discerning Life on the Eternal Word Television Network. The Discernment of Spirits, Setting the Captives Free, with Father Timothy Gallagher. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. Welcome, Father Gallagher. Thank you. The Discernment of Spirits, an Ignatian Guide for Everyday Living, is the book, the text, that we will be basing this series on. Could you tell us just a little bit about its formation? Well, it really began when I was ordained as an Oblate of the Virgin Mary, and my religious community is dedicated above all to the Ignatian spiritual exercises, to making this retreat experience available to people in all different kinds of settings. Formal retreats in a retreat house of a few days or many days, or as an experience in parishes for larger groups, weekend retreats, retreat settings, and so on. And I quickly realized that I really couldn't do this responsibly, lead Ignatian retreats, retreats based on the teaching of St. Ignatius of Loyola, unless I knew more about this particular piece of his teaching, the discernment of spirits, and specifically his, what he calls his rules or guidelines for discernment of spirits, which really has to do, that, that title, discernment of spirits, generally is kind of appealing to people, but at the same time, they're not quite sure exactly what it means. And very simply, what it deals with is the ups and downs in the spiritual life. We all know how at times we feel a desire to pray. And when we do pray, God feels close and and our hearts are warm and there's energy. And we get up from the prayer with a renewed sense of God's closeness. and, And we have the scriptures are alive. We willingly go to church. We have creativity in the Lord. We want to take new steps. And then other times for reasons that escape us often. We're not quite sure why. The bottom seems to drop out of that energy. And it's hard, if we're honest, it's hard to even want to pray. We may get ourselves to pray, but it's a very different experience now. And we don't feel God's closeness and God's warmth. And the new steps that we've been taking in the spiritual life now don't seem quite so inviting. It's hard to get myself down to church for the Bible study or the the activity. And to reach out in a love based on Christ in a new way, let's say in my marriage or toward my children, or in my workplace. These ups and downs are going on all the time in the spiritual life. And St. Ignatius of Loyola, certainly not the only one who spoke about this in our Catholic spiritual tradition, but clearly is the one who spoke about this with the greatest clarity, practicality, and usability. And this teaching is formulated in 14, I'm, I'm about to say, simple guidelines. They're not simplistic. They're very deep. They touch very profound things in the spiritual life. But the simple does fit in the sense that they're very clear. They're Mm -hmm. very usable. I've been teaching this around the country now for probably about 20 years to groups of all different kinds of backgrounds, to lay people in parishes, to priests and seminarians and religious people with very um, developed educational backgrounds and professional people and people who may have only high school backgrounds, and and all the rest. I have never yet found one person when we have gone through this teaching who has said to me, I don't know what you're talking about. Everyone does. Everyone, that is, who has at all in some personal way tried to love the Lord Jesus, sincerely tried to live his teaching, tried to pray. This teaching will be simple, clear, and usable in a way that, that transforms, really. When I began giving these retreats, shortly after ordination, people began asking for them. And quickly, as I say, I realized that I really couldn't do these retreats responsibly without knowing a lot more than I then knew about these 14 guidelines or Ignatius teaching on discernment. I was uh, teaching in a seminary at the time, and a point came when I had a month free, and I can still see it. I went to the upper floor of our residence so I wouldn't be disturbed, brought my books up there, commentary on these rules, and began pretty seriously studying them, pacing up and down the corridor, Mm -hmm. speaking it out loud to myself, underlining the text. And after that, began somewhat hesitantly to give very simple 
half hour teachings on these rules in retreat settings. And it was the response that began everything that led to the book eventually, maybe about 25 years later. Uh, it was electric. I, I'll never forget one particular retreat. The first time I did this, it was a retreat over a, a number of days. And each day I would give a simple half hour presentation. And we went through the 14 rules. The retreatants knew, and I knew, that in the transmitting of that teaching and in the receiving of it, something electric had happened. And out of that retreat came a good many more requests for that teaching. And it got so I was doing that teaching repeatedly in the course of a year in retreat settings. Then people were asking for it as a separate teaching, just in a parish or in a seminar setting in a retreat center or wherever. And then finally people began saying, you should write this up as a book. And when my religious superior said it once, and then said it a second time, and then said it a third time, sort of in casual conversation, finally dawned on me that maybe the Lord was saying something to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you think so? And so I, I asked to speak with him, and we, we sat down, and I said, do you really mean it? He said, yes. We looked at a calendar, set aside time, and that's how the book came to be written. Just to help us who may not appreciate the vocabulary, because it is foreign, the actual... Uh, going deeply into a spirituality based on the great teachings of St. Ignatius of Loyola, that a term like discernment, it's not just simple decision-making, is it? No. In these 14 rules, what we're really talking about is spiritual experience, the ups and downs, the things that are going on in our hearts and in our minds, the way we're thinking, the stirrings of our hearts, this kind of interior stuff, if I could say that reverently, of spiritual experience mm -hmm. that's going on every day, most of which we don't even notice, although it affects us very much. But we'd be hard put, for example, I wonder how many of us could remember what was stirring in our hearts and thoughts this morning when we rose, to say nothing of yesterday or a week ago. How much of that did we notice? Uh, how much of that, if we use Ignatius' word, could we discern? So eventually it will lead to decision making, but decision making, but it begins as an awareness of interior spiritual experience in our hearts, the stirrings, the feelings, the movements of our hearts, what we call affective experience, and also the the um, the thoughts, what runs through our minds. This is the more conceptual side of things, thoughts and stirrings of the heart. What is of God in that? What is not of God in that? If I feel great energy toward this particular activity and feel a certain resistance to that other, if I really would want to do this, spiritually speaking, and don't really want to do that, how can I know what within that interior experience, which is changing and shifting all the time, ups and downs, how can I know what is of God and should be accepted, what is not of God, or Ignatius would say is of the enemy, um, the tempter, the one the scripture calls the liar, Mm -hmm. and therefore is a lie, is not true, is not leading me where God wants me to go, and therefore should be rejected. A teaching which allows us to understand, to notice and understand this experience, and then know what should be accepted and followed and rejected, that's the teaching which we call discernment of spirits. That's what Ignatius is doing in these 14 guidelines or 14 rules. It is so much more than an intellectual exercise, isn't it? I mean, when you talk about listening to our hearts, again, that is something that, isn't it there a trend to try to separate the head and the heart, that somehow the emotions that we're feeling shouldn't be integrated into the thought process that we have? I mean, this combination is really quite foreign, isn't it? There's only one human being, and there are different faculties, different capabilities, different aspects of our humanity, but there's only one human being. And what we'll find when we grow in the ability, as please God, as we go through these rules, this will become clear how we do this. Uh, what we'll find is that when our hearts are feeling certain things, we tend to think in certain ways. When my heart is happy and alive and feels God's closeness, the thoughts are probably going to be thoughts of of new initiatives that I could take, spiritually speaking, new understanding of what I'm doing, thoughts that open up new ways and, and, and point out a kind of chart or pathway toward growth. When my heart is feeling heavy, doesn't feel God's closeness, is feeling a, a kind of, well, it can get to a kind of hopelessness at times or a sadness or just a, a lack of any kind of energy in the spiritual life, the thoughts now are going to be probably the contrary. Why am I doing this? 
do I even want to do this? Does it make sense to pray this way? Why should I continue this? Maybe I should let that go. I was thinking of taking this new initiative in the parish or in living Christ's love in the family. All of these kinds of thoughts. So what's important is, and that's why it's important to be aware of the movements of the heart and their related thoughts, because they're going to go together. Mm -hmm. We'll see Ignatius say this very clearly in the rules. So these are different aspects of our humanity, but they work very much very much in tandem, if I can use and say that word. You use the term rule, a rule. Uh, help us to understand that in relation to the exercises. If we look at, let's say, the writings of um, St. Francis de Sales, for example, something like the introduction to the devout life. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on how it's published, let's say, what will it be, 300 pages? It's, it's an organized, developed treatise on the spiritual life, which goes kind of systematically through various things. Or St. John of the Cross with his systematic treatises on the life of prayer, and many other saints like that. St. Ignatius is writing spiritual exercises. He's not giving a theology or a theory to help us understand a set of truths, although obviously there are theological truths which underlie what he's doing. These are This is a very practical book. Mm -hmm. It's the spiritual equivalent of a manual of physical exercises. They're things to be done that are outlined, and that is what is behind this word rule. What that means is these are short, concrete, practical guidelines which in, in a few words give a very rich understanding of this kind of up and down spiritual experience and related thoughts, and then give us a set of tools for actually responding in, in real life to these experiences. When you are feeling the warmth of God's closeness, this is what you do. When you are feeling the heaviness, God seems far away and there's no energy in the spiritual life, these are things you should do and things you shouldn't do in that time. So that it's in that sense that Ignatius calls these rules. They're very practical guidelines for life. Those of us who are out here listening to the, the teachings of this, assuming that we're total neophytes, we're beginners in this quest, we just want to get started, what's the first thing we should do? What's the first disposition or position we should take in this exercise? Well, I think for most of us, and I'll certainly speak of myself, because until someone taught me Ignatius' text and helped me to understand it, I wouldn't have known where to begin. If someone were to say to me, well, you need to be aware of and notice your interior spiritual experience, my response would be, help me to do that, because I wouldn't know what I was looking for. The first need that we have is to be instructed. So that's where I would say, that's where we begin. That's what led to the writing of the book. That's what now about 20 years of traveling around the country teaching this has been about. Once we begin to get our feet wet in this, we begin to get an understanding of this spiritual experience, then everything can begin. Then we can begin to notice it in daily living. We can begin to name what it is. This is of God. This is not of God. And then we can respond with spiritual wisdom to that, accepting what is of God, rejecting what is of the enemy, as Ignatius will say. So I'd say the place to begin is to learn. What a wonderful thing that in our Catholic spiritual tradition we have masters like this with a proven teaching, proven not only by the sanctity of the author, in this case St. Ignatius, in other cases St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, and the rest, but proven also because in Ignatius' case this teaching has been used for 500 years now and has blessed countless generations of Christians before us. It is approved by the magisterium of the church. So we have a very solid source to which to turn in order to learn. But that's the first step. It's just formation in the spiritual life. We'll return in just a moment to The Discernment of Spirits, Setting the Captives Free with Father Timothy Gallagher.
Practice Free with Father Timothy Gallagher. When I think of physical exercise, sometimes when we're about to begin the process of physical exercise, we jump in and we try to do too much or we try to go too far in the beginning and then we get discouraged and we drop away. What would your advice be to that person who's beginning to enter into these exercises? Wonderful point. (laughs) It's a wonderful point. I think the parallel holds absolutely with the spiritual life. Start slowly. Go through a gradual process of learning more and more about this, and then everything else will follow. And ideally with some kind of guidance. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would hope that something like the book that I've written could provide a kind of guidance even at home or for friends who want to go through this together. If there is in one's area someone who is knowledgeable in this and could actually lead the teaching, that would be a wonderful thing whether a priest in a parish or someone in a retreat house or just somebody who has a background in this kind of teaching and with the help of maybe a book like that I've written or other instruments would be able to guide us. So I would say take it slowly, grow gradually in it, begin to apply what is clear, don't overreach in doing this. If something is not clear in the teaching, if I don't understand the experience, can very simply uh, acknowledge that and accept that. We walk in the proportion to the clarity that we have without overreaching that. And then we just trust that as we continue to grow in this with the various helps that we've mentioned, we'll increasingly find our way. If a, if a person could ever make an Ignatian retreat, obviously that would be almost the best way to learn this. It is such a, a fundamental building block of the spiritual life now in the life of the church today for that body of Christ, that it is not something that is limited to, say, a particular order within the church. And I'm thinking, of course, it is not just the Jesuit exercise. It is available for everyone. It's a, it's a gift to everyone. It, for example, even your order, but your particular order, the Oblates of the Virgin Mary, it is a, this is a central part of your charism. Yes, I suppose I'm a kind of living witness to the fact that you don't have to be a Jesuit mm-hmm. to uh, to benefit from this kind of teaching. Our founder, who is the Venerable Bruno Lanteri, an Italian priest who died in 1830, fell in love with the Ignatian spiritual exercises. His spiritual director was um, a real man of God, a, a Jesuit who was a, a man of wisdom and holiness, whom he met as a seminarian. And through this Jesuit, Father Diesbach, a Swiss Jesuit, he came to know the Ignatian spiritual exercises and Ignatian spirituality and fell in love with it and became convinced that there is, this was the gift God gave him as a founder, that there is no instrument equal to the Ignatian exercises as a practical, usable, and available tool or means to lead people to the dispositions which create a saint. It has to be lived out. But to take a person from where he or she is in the spiritual life to the point where this person now really longs for holiness and then wants to become active in the service of Christ in the person's vocation, marriage or priesthood, religious life, single life, there's nothing like the exercises of St. Ignatius to do this. And at the same time, it was evident to him that although the Jesuits have this these spiritual exercises, they are so involved in other work, especially education, which is obviously of great importance for the church too, that in practice the spiritual exercises are not at all as available as the church needs. I think we could, as a very simple test of that is if any of us listening now were to feel moved to make the Ignatian spiritual exercises, probably we wouldn't know exactly where to turn. Mm -hmm. Who can guide these? Where does one go? Um, And so he said, the church needs a group of men, religious, priests and brothers, who will be trained in these spiritual exercises and will not do other things so that they can make them available to the church. And he said, even if you add this to all the Jesuits in the world, we'll still never meet the need in the church. And I'll say from my own experience that I think he's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I I just constantly witness the power of the exercises and the fact that as soon as people know that they're available and that they can be given well, you cannot possibly meet the demand. People want them. 
Their heart cries out for it, I think. Oh, when people learn this teaching, they can't get enough of it. I, I always remember one time I was doing this teaching for a group at a retreat house. And toward the end of the teaching, one woman who was on the retreat uh, told me that she'd been looking out her window on the retreat grounds one day, and she'd seen the the uh, the grounds person head over toward a kind of tool shed, go in and come out with several tools that he needed for the work that he was doing. And she said, that's what Ignatius has done for me in the spiritual life. He's given me the tools that I need to live my daily experience in the spiritual life. Now, I'll say, too, that I think the reason why this teaching is so powerful is because it is about the ordinary spiritual experience of every Christian, of everyone who loves the Lord Jesus. You have people like St. John of the Cross who write about advanced higher states of mystical prayer, which is beautiful. Most of us probably, when we read that teaching or hear of it, say that is beautiful, but it's different than my experience. Mm -hmm. I'm not there. But as I've said, I have never met anyone yet who has learned Ignatius' teaching and said anything other than, this is it, this is what happens, this is my daily experience, this gives me the tools that I need to live at home, in the parish, in the workplace, in my family, in my case, in my religious life and priesthood, in my ordinary daily experience. Now I know what's going on. Now I know how to understand it, I know how to respond to it. Oh. That in itself is a great gift. And as you said, it's one for uh, everyone, not just Catholics. No, the way I would say it is, if you think, for example, of St. Francis of Assisi, who founded the Franciscan priests and brothers, but whose teaching on poverty is a gift for everyone in every calling. Everyone loves St. Francis of Assisi mm -hmm. and the simplicity of his life and it's an inspiration for us regardless of our vocations. Or St. Therese of the Child Jesus, who was a Carmelite, but whose story of the soul and whose teaching blesses people in all vocations. Um, St. John of the Cross, St. Teresa of Avila, Carmelites, but they're the masters of prayer for us all. What they are in these areas of the religious life, St. Ignatius is in the area of ordinary daily spiritual experience, what we call discernment of spirits. He founded the Jesuits, but his teaching is he's the master of this for all in all vocations in the church. And I can amply witness to that, as I say, from years of teaching this to people in all different vocations. I love, for example, going into a parish. You have 100 people, 300 people, whatever it might be, and you go through this teaching and you see, you see people come alive. See, because this, tech, this set of 14 rules basically is about learning how to handle the dark times in the spiritual life, the times that Ignatius calls desolation, spiritual desolation. And if I may say it, there's so much of that today. Mm -hmm. Life itself leads to a lot of heavy moments for all of us. What's happening in our country, what's happening in the world, and some of the struggles right now even in our own church, things, the kinds of things that sadly are in the papers and so on, there are so many reasons for which people will can feel darkness or desolation or heaviness in the spiritual life. So to have someone now explain that, and even more, teach us that God calls us to freedom from that. And not only that, but to give us one after another a set of concrete, effective tools for dealing with those times so that not only are we not harmed by them, but we actually grow through those times as God intends is absolutely invaluable in the spiritual life. People love it. Mm -hmm. People love it. There are so many marketers out there who, in the secular realm, want to satisfy that hungry heart, and they keep saying, either buy this or come here or do that. That What I hear you saying is what St. Ignatius is pointing towards is what Christ pointed us to, is the interior, to the heart. That's where the hungry heart will be satisfied. It's as, as Jesus says, that he comes to give peace in a way that the world can never give it. The title of the book, as you mentioned earlier, is The Discernment of Spirits. And it's a good title. It's a title that was given by the editor. And he explained to me that you, you everything is internet-driven today, so you get the key words right in the title. Rather than poetic sorts of titles, you get discernment of spirits right there in the title. 
My title was a biblical one, Setting Captives Free, from Luke chapter 4, when Jesus goes to the synagogue in, um, in Nazareth. They hand him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He stands up and reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, to let the oppressed go free. Setting captives free, that's what Jesus' mission is entirely about. And so many of us, if I can reverently say it, so many of us live in captivity too often to desolation, to a kind of darkness, even when we're faithful to the Lord and we go ahead with prayer and our commitment to serve the church, but there's a kind of heaviness somewhere in our hearts. And Jesus calls us to freedom. He did not come that we be captive, that our hearts be held hostage or captive to desolation or darkness. And so Ignatius' key message is that we are called to freedom from that kind of heaviness of heart, that there is a way through that so again, as I say, not only not to be harmed by it, but even actually to grow through it. And that's why people love these rules, because in a way that is unique, St. Ignatius can explain that kind of experience and then say, don't do this and do this, and captives will be set free. I think I like your title better. But it, no matter what title is used, I mean, it's important that the person who is listening, if at all possible, pick up a copy of The Discernment of Spirits, an Ignatian Guide for Everyday Living as we begin to enter into this, this great journey together, as we explore the 14 rules of St. Ignatius and hopefully apply those spiritual exercises into our daily lives. Thank you, Father Timothy Gallagher. It's a privilege. You've been listening to The Discernment of Spirits, Setting Captives Free with Father Timothy Gallagher. To hear and or download this episode, along with many others, go to discerninghearts.com. The Discernment of Spirits Setting Captives Free is a production of discerninghearts.com in cooperation with the Oblates of the Virgin Mary. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. Join us next time for The Discernment of Spirits Setting Captives Free with Father Timothy Gallagher. <laughs>